This tutorial will cover breakout rooms. You can create breakout rooms on the fly in the middle of a meeting, and you can also set them up ahead of time. Breakout rooms work on all platforms. So down at the bottom of my meeting tool set, I have breakout rooms, and I only have two students in here with me, but that's okay. We can still do the breakout rooms with this small group. And when we select breakout room as the host, it's going to give you a tool creator where it'll allow you to change the amount of rooms that you create. As you change this, so right now it's gonna assign two participants into one room. If I select a different number, notice at the bottom here, it's gonna give you the count for each room. So if you get a larger group, as you make changes to this, the numbers will change here. Once you have that set up, if you are okay with these being kind of random groups or automatically created, you can hit uh, automatically. If you would like to do it manually, select that and then you will have the ability to start managing that piece. We'll go with it automatically and create. Once you've done that, it will give names for each room, uh, the ability to rename it, delete it, and then the participants in each room. And notice the carrot here that will um, allow you to break down. If you have a large amount of rooms, uh, sometimes you'll need that to expand the participant list. Uh, controls or things you can do with participants is move them around. So if I decide student uh, from the web, needs to be in a different group, I can assign them to an alternative group. And you would have all the lists of the entire list of all the groups, as well as the current counts of participants in those groups, which is a nice feature. The second part is exchange, and that's just trading. I can trade this student from uh, with another student from, uh, uh, from the list. All right, additional options are at the bottom. And when we select this, you can have this opt with the option to move everybody right away. So when you press the button and open all rooms, it automatically sends everyone, they don't have to do anything. If you want them to be able to select join that room, then you can leave this unselected. Uh, I'm gonna move my students right to the rooms. Do I want to allow my students to come back to the main session? That's up to you, but if you leave this checked, they could leave, come back to the main room, and then go back to their group again. The time limit for your rooms, let's say we're breaking up this group uh, for 10 minutes, you can set that. You can be notified when the time is up and then you'll be uh, hit with the option to close all the rooms and then you can have a countdown after the closing the breakout room and if you want to do a timer. As soon as you like those settings, you can do a recreate where it'll basically redo this. Um, I've noticed that this uh, participants per room doesn't always update when I do a recreate, but that basically allows you to restart or start fresh. I could add additional rooms manually or open them all up when I'm ready. I'll go ahead and open them up. And my, I just told them they're in that breakout room. So this is a student that is on the web and they're in this room by themselves. Um, don't think there's a notice on this app let me see if I go full screen. Yeah, there's nothing that tells me as a participant which room I'm in when I'm on the web. So this student has joined through the web. But a participant does have the option to ask for help when they're here. Note that they can turn on and off their mics now, even if you disabled that previously. They can see who else is in the room, and that's where they're going to find out which room they're in. You can see they're in breakout room one. They have the ability to share the screen, chat, uh, and like I said, ask for help. It'll send a message to the host that they need help. They need some help. And then I just got this pop up as a host. And then if they choose to leave the room, they have to be very careful whether or not they just leave the breakout room or the entire meeting. So just be very deliberate and uh, have them understand that they want to make sure they just leave the breakout room and that brings them back to the main session. Okay, as a moderator, I can see that this student had asked for help and I can go join that room right away. So I can go, all right, let's go check out that room. It's gonna have me joining breakout room one. I can see what's the problem and then I can leave the room. So I'm in that room, but I'm the only one here now. And then I can leave. See that I can still end the entire meeting, leave just this meeting by myself, or leave the breakout room. I'll go leave breakout room and return to the main session as the host or teacher. 
All right, we're back in the main room and let's pull up the breakout room options here. So I can, as a host, I can room hop. I can join any of these rooms I want. I can also see that these students haven't actually joined their rooms. The Chromebook student had the option to join. So they're gonna join. And now that this Chromebook student is joining, they're going to change from that not join to bold. So now I know that that student's in that room. I can manually move this student to breakout room one, but I can't seem to manually move them. Um, so that's the important option or feature of not selecting the uh, automatically have students move to those rooms. Down at the bottom, in the breakout room menu, I have the ability to message to everybody. So I can send a chat that everybody in all rooms would receive. You can say one minute to return. Everybody would receive that at the top of their screen. So here's a participant and they just got the message from me. If I want to close the rooms early, I can always do that and I can hit the close rooms. It's gonna give uh, participants a message that their room is closing and they're all gonna be joining back into the main room with me. And now it just goes back to the beginning menu where it has that set up, the initial setup again. And we're all back here. A couple things to note about the, way, uh, the breakout rooms is students can chat to each other, um, there's no record of that chat that I am aware of, so be advised that um, students are going to have those controls. They can turn on video, they can turn on audio, so you have to be very mindful about how you use breakout rooms and what support and co-teachers you might be using with or using uh, to support those breakout rooms or that use of a breakout room. And that's it for breakout rooms on the fly. If you wanted to have this set up ahead of time, that's in your meeting builder when you schedule a meeting. So if I pull up the web and we take a look at a meeting, here's my class meeting. When you scroll down to the bottom and go to edit it, or if you're in the editor as you're building, at the bottom, under meeting options, is the option to have breakout room pre-assigning. So when you select that, you can import this information from a CSV pre-populated, or you can build them with the builder tool. Assign participants to breakouts by adding their emails. This is only gonna work when students are authenticating and have that email as part of their joining information. You can create up to 50 breakout rooms and assign up to 200 people. So I can start the breakout room. I can add, let's say, I think I wanna have four rooms and I can start adding participants. So you would type in their email addresses. Uh, I can type in my own. And that person's in the first one. And you can remove and remove from here. So I can say, you know what? Uh, I'm actually gonna be in room two. And there we go. So each of these rooms lets you to build that list. And now these rooms are pre-assigned. You would save that and you'd be ready to go when you are launching your breakout rooms.